It may be a clean burning fuel and a huge potential source of income for WA, but uranium also creates the most lethal weapons and among the most toxic waste pollution. With the new government promising to go ahead with uranium exports, Simon Bailey investigates the state's responsibilities. Nuclear power is only green if you ignore all the side effects, the consequences, the waste products, the accidents and the fact that it's tied to weapons of mass destruction. The modern nuclear power industry is a very safe, modern controlled industry. Hiroshima, Chernobyl. On a global scale, when it comes to the application of nuclear technology, there's a devastating track record. You might think this sort of thing is not what WA is involved in, but think again. Our new Premier Colin Barnett has dropped the ban on the mining of uranium, a key ingredient in the nuclear power and weapons industry. The nuclear industry has been preparing for this for the last four years. An investment in exploration has jumped from $200,000 to almost $27 million. Green groups are now scrambling to stop WA joining the Northern Territory and South Australia as exporters of what's known as yellow cake. WA Green Senator Scott Ludlam has taken the fight to the screen in a documentary called Climate of Hope. I was very concerned about some of the claims that the nuclear industry was making about being the solution to climate change. And I thought the best way to debunk those dodgy claims was to produce a documentary. Uranium is a naturally occurring radioactive rock that can be found all over Australia and there are large deposits here in WA. Greg Hall is the managing director of Toro Energy. It's one of Australia's uranium heavyweights with a stake in a major uranium deposit in Waluna on the goldfields. So I think there'll be a number of both small and medium to larger size operations under review in the next three to four years. According to the state government, WA could be exporting uranium in two or three years' time. And Uranium Australia is predicting that from now until the year 2030, the industry could be worth $3.2 billion to WA's economy. Look, uranium mining nationally, after 20 years of exporting the stuff, is worth less to our economy than our cheese exports. But we don't see ministers jumping up and holding inquiries into cheese. To produce one tonne of uranium oxide, or yellow cake, around 660 tonnes of rock is crushed and discarded. There are some who might argue, if WA supports the nuclear industry by exporting uranium, we should bear some responsibility for its radioactive waste. Senator Ludlam hopes this documentary will lead people to oppose our involvement. This radioactive waste rock, or tailings, is dumped next to the mine in huge dams. It contains a cocktail of radioactive decay products and needs to be isolated from the environment for tens of thousands of years. They generate uh, tailings the same as a copper mine or a nickel mine does. They have the similar sort of chemical constituents going through them. So it's really no different. But Mr Hall isn't backing down from a fight. He says the industry will continue to assure West Aussies that uranium mining and exporting is safe. Remember that uranium has been shipped quite safely through Darwin, the port of the city of Darwin and the port of Darwin for 30 years, and through Adelaide for 20 years. So it's a very manageable product. It's not a high volume product. In WA, we don't have confidence that we can even export lead safely. The idea of exporting uranium out of Western Australian ports is just something of a nightmare. If inhaled as dust or swallowed with food, these radiation-emitting particles can lodge in our lungs and other organs. Uranium mining is a dead end. Economically, it's a dead end. Socially, it's a disaster. And environmentally, it should be a crime. Now, here's Peter Van Onselen with WA Mines Minister Norman Moore and Greens MP Giz Watson on the spot. Mr Moore and Ms Watson, thank you very much for joining me. Thank you. Hi. Ms Watson, I'll start with you if I can. I want to talk about the issue of uranium mining. Now, I should start by disclosing that I've written in favour of uranium mining in the past. We've just elected a government that has said it's in favour of uranium mining. Are you becoming a bit of a dinosaur on this by holding out on it? Oh, not at all. Um, there is a very strong uh, view held by a significant 
percentage of the Western Australian population uh, that they're opposed to uranium mining. And uh, the news poll that was done at the time of the election indicated that 48% of the Western Australian population was in favour of legislation to ban uranium mining, as opposed to 38% um, who didn't want legislation. So I, I would argue that the Greens represent uh, that 48% of the population. That said, though, the new government has said it's in favour of uranium mining and it does control both houses of parliament in its coalition of sorts. Mr Moore, you're the mining minister. How long do you think it's going to take before we're going to see uranium mining in WA? Well, I don't know. There are a number of deposits that have been found over the years. Uh, there are no applications before the uh, mines department to carry out any mining. But now that the government's policy is going to change, I suspect that uh, we will get some applications in the next couple of years. Uh, I would anticipate a mine would be up and running within the next two or three years. We've got uh, the Greens already on the record, obviously, being opposed to it. Mr Ripper has suggested that the Labor Party are going to stay opposed to it. Are you concerned about the political ramifications of uranium mining, given that it's not going to be a bipartisan exercise? Well, we went to the last election clearly stating that we would support uranium mining. It was, um, uh, Giz says it was a big deal in the election. Well, in fact, Mr Carpenter tried to make it a, a defining issue and indeed promised to legislate to ban uh, mining uranium had he been elected, uh, and he lost. Now, I suggest that the people of Western Australia have the view that it is not a big issue, as Giz would suggest, uh, and uh, people are quite comfortable that this should happen. It happens in the Northern Territory, it happens in South Australia, Federal Labor supports it. Uh, Eric Ripper and his lot are already out of tune with the rest of the Labor Party. We're all out of time. Mr Moore, Ms Watson, thank you very much for joining us. Yeah, thank you, Peter.